Okay, here we are. We, I had to get up and take care of the animals because I have a young, a uh, young old dog who's driving me crazy, uh, and I had to get her settled. So she's up with her, with my son. So I have a guest that I would like to bring up. She is a longtime friend of both John and myself, and I am ecstatic, Ooh, very happy. And here we go. It's Maria. Hey, Eddie, how are you? Hey, oh my goodness. It's been so long. Your hair is so beautiful. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I'm trying how to compete with you, Eddie. I'm trying to compete with you. I got a long way to go. <laughs> oh, uh, hi, Rakin. Sorry about that. I saw you as I was coming back from taking care of the animals. So how have you been? I've been good. This is the first time I've even been uh, on camera since like November. So uh, just dipping, dipping my toe back in, but I am yeah. all about this trial. So <laughs> yeah, I'm so it, it, it the, the whoo, today was like the day that has probably given me the most. Uh, every time I come back on camera, I look like I just went 10 rounds or whatever with Mike Tyson. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know what I was expecting from Zulima, but it wasn't this. I don't know what she seems very, uh, it's like soft and tiny, you know, in the way that she communicates. And, you know, maybe that's why she was easy to manipulate. We know that that's what Chad likes to do. Let's find women and, and, you know, blow them up, make them think that they're all of these spectacular things, like they can control the weather, for example. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> oh, I wonder how long it hit her before she was unable to. Probably the first time a rain didn't happen when she thought it was going <laughs> to. Oh, crap. I thought I had it. <laughs> I can't imagine. I cannot. Oh, actually, I can. But we won't go there. <laughs> so, this... I don't even know. Uh, the yesterday stuff was also a doozy with uh, 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 with uh, Melanie and her husband. Melanie Ian. and yes, Ian. Yes, the Polowskis. There's too many Melanies. That's my problem. Is there's, I got to figure out who's who and and well, yeah, they've been saying of, Gib. They've been saying Gib lately for Melanie Gib, which is I mean it's helpful, but it sounds weird. So. <laughs> yeah, I got to see if I can. Let me see if I can make this. Us. Oh no, that didn't work. Hello, I'm, I'm, no, I'm trying. <laughs> okay. Hold on. Oh, I know what. I Hold on one second. I gotta do something in settings to get that back. Usually, it's on the bottom of the screen. There, you can just pick one. Beep boop boop beep. Yeah, I I I, I got rid of one. Oh, there, there we, we go. go. <laughs> <laughs> you can only have eight, and I got to playing around trying to figure out which one fits. And then I went, oh, I don't need that one. I it's just me up here. <laughs> so that was a bad idea. So there yeah. it is. It's back. I do want to say you've been doing a good job. I, you know, being up there by yourself is hard and you never, you know, you're never sure if you're doing a good job, but you are. I think you've had a good strategy reading, what is it, Nate's uh, tweets or whatever they yes. are. I don't know. Yeah. Going, through, yes. go, going yes. through that way. It's been really cool. Or when you've had questions that have randomly popped into your head and you just research them. And it's oh. like, that's great. No, it's helpful because sometimes I'm like, yeah, I would like to know what that is too. Yeah. What is, what is that? So it's been pretty oh. cool. Google is my friend. <laughs> I, I Google the silliest stuff. I also Google some stuff that might be a true crime people. Do not ever let your computers get in the hands of the law. They will think that you are the next unaliver because that's the stuff we look up. I mean, we I've got pictures that we edit out of everything and blur over and all this stuff. And all of a sudden, people don't understand what it's like to be in this uh, this world if you're not used to it especially if you've been working in it and being the editor and all that stuff for so long there's a lot of stuff on your computer that you probably <laughs> you kind of go hmm, maybe i need to click delete <laughs> no doubt <laughs> oh. no doubt uh, i do want to say you know hello to everybody i know i'm not great at chatting in the chat uh because i'm usually listening to this while i'm doing other things like today i was cleaning my pantry while listening so i'm not great at chatting but it seems like you have a really great group of people here and it's just it's, it's really cool to see it's it's a lot of the people that are here with me are people that were from elsewhere that we don't talk about <laughs> but <laughs> but uh they've come over this way since the uh change so it's 
you know, it's a, the channel's been sitting around for a long time. I started it in 2015 and then worked a, an actual job and then didn't have time to do anything. So it, it's been a little, uh, you know, dormant. And so I get comments about, you're only getting this many views. Well, I know because it's sleepy. I'm trying to wake it up. So, uh, yeah, Mondays is a hard day for me. Yesterday I was like, okay. I have to be chipper. <laughs> you know, you get through the weekend and you've had all your fun and stuff. And Monday's the day you need a recovery day from your weekend. <laughs> I needed a vacation from my vacation type That's of thing. So, <sighs> but yes, uh, this trial has been a, a, a doozy. Did you listen to the Lori Vallow? Because there was no uh, video for that. It was only uh, audio. I did not. I did not. No, I just got like the little excerpts here and there. But yeah, no, I, I wish I had. But they're giving us a lot here. I think what I'm thrown by is this is this is Chad's trial. And I'm not sure that they've always done a great job of connecting Chad. I mean, I think that's what they're doing bit by bit, you know, by filling, filling out the narrative with all of these different people. But how do we connect Chad as being part of the conspiracy directly right yes uh, and, and i do struggle with it a little bit especially when it comes to let's see so this is we've got the two kids that he's on trial for we've yes. got his wife is charles part of it as well or no uh charles is going to be a separate uh trial and it's in okay. arizona and uh Lori is going up for that whenever it's the dates changed uh I don't remember what it is. If anybody in the chat knows the date, if they've given one, I know it's been pushed. I think it was pushed. Uh, but if this date still the same, it could be this year, but most likely it'll get pushed to next year. But yeah, she's okay. up for that one. It's in Arizona. And I don't know if, I don't know if Chad's being charged with that or not. I don't know the chatters who've been, I have a lot of people who've been following this from day one. Yeah. Um, for it's been four years like nate the guy the that we take the tweets from nate eaton he is one was one of the first that actually was there when he saw Lori's jeep drive fly by while the cops were chasing and he's all like chase that and he and his uh camera guy went and they did the interview with Lori. that's well very well known of them they wouldn't speak they he kept asking them the questions and they just wouldn't respond so the, he has been excellent and he's always really good with his uh, tweets and stuff and very, uh, he has it on his update page and everything. And then in the evenings, he does a full hour plus long uh, recap. Sometimes on the weekend, he'll do two recaps. Oh, so wow. yeah, he does. He's amazing. Uh, they had some really good, he had some help when he recently went on a, a out uh, at a country wedding thing and had two of his uh people do the tweets for him they did a really good job oh, okay okay, okay I got you. yeah it is we used them as well this kalama and the other caitlin or sup i think anyway he used or he had help when he you know had to but for the most part he has been in court every day and you can actually see where he sits yes last night i think it was or whenever that one i think it was last night he actually showed where he sits and he's right directly behind, uh, normally he's right behind prosecution and there's a pillar. He's usually right next to there in that back row. Okay. Yes, Mal, I have company. Everybody, this is Maria. Hello. She's the channel that comes in the chat. Nobody a asked yes. the show. And she's she and her son have been a, you know, had their own channel for a long time. And they're so cute together. I love, I love them. I love the both of you guys together. She's here. She's a uh, friends with both John and myself for quite a while. Yes. And yep. We used to do, uh, yeah, reality TV related panels together. Me and Eddie did so. Yeah, you can go up and on John's channel. One of the um, if Mal wants to drop John's in the chat, you can go on his and look in the waybacks. <laughs> it's been, <laughs> it's been a while, but you'll see as it pops up on my recommends. Our our stuff still pops up for me. I see your face every now and again. She was on the panel with us at John's when we did the big the big interview with Peyton 
from Sister I was Rose. at John's. I was, was at John's. John's house, sitting <laughs> next to him on the couch, and that was one of the best. I was my name was spelled wrong. I hardly said anything, and I get raked over the coat. Why are you even up there? You weren't saying because it was John's, and it was a thing. That well, was yeah, like, we didn't know what we didn't know that's what we were going to do that day. We thought we were just we were doing a recap, and suddenly it turned into something else. So that was that was a cool one. Yeah, <laughs> it was it was three hour long. And it's been all over. Our faces have been on entertainment news, people, met, all the things. Oh my gosh! I wish we had had better lighting that day. I was like, I look terrible, I and I'm on entertainment tonight, right now. And my name is still wrong. <laughs> my, it said Maria Yates on the screen, so it didn't even have my name on the screen. <laughs> so, oh, it well. was all wrong, but it was funny. Yes, it was. A, it was a great one, and it's been. It still gets major views. It's still a thing. It's out there. They're still quoting it, and the kids are all like. Yeah, that one thing Peyton did, <laughs> but it was uh, it was great. So, is, if you guys have any questions or whatever, or anything in the in the comments, just let us know. And as we go along, there, what time did they say there? It's already twelve oh seven. I'm trying to keep an eye. They said one o'clock. I think was their return time. Okay. And then yeah, so we got about an hour ish. Okay. So, but yeah, this is uh uh the. The case itself, uh, I have in my past, in my world, and, and along the way, have met people who are very similar in beliefs and stuff like this. So it is a thing that happens. Um, it, oh, Wendy says, I remember. <laughs> that is not my name, but it was that day. <laughs> It was, it was fun. It was a little thing. It was a whole thing they had. But then we got distracted by the fact that Somebody was coming up with us. I think we had like what thirty seconds, and then we weren't expect expecting that he would actually say yes. Yes, <laughs> look. yeah, it was like, oh, okay. So then, yeah, we we were unprepared. We were flying by the seat of our pants, but it was a good time. And yeah, obviously, Peyton liked to talk, so <laughs> yeah, very much so. And a lot of what he has had to say is pretty much what's been happening over this whole, but what past year or whatever it's been to you know, since all that stuff came out. But uh, Reagan has a question. Maria, weren't you in a motorhome or something during the time waiting on a remodel? Well, I, I, we were building a house. It wasn't a remodel. But yeah, we were in, I was in a motorhome. But I, for that interview, I was actually at John's house. So <laughs> yeah, she went on, a, she visited him. She, she got to see the cottage, just like I have seen the cottage. Yep. Yes. Yep. <laughs> so yes, D Green, we're here together we have we this wasn't this was an impromptu hey let's do this so why not yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. i just want to give you support Addie. that's all i i i think you just have this great i don't know there's this lightness about you that that's just fun to be around and you know i think you do a great job with this i like that it's a little more personal than some of the bigger channels in the comments right so people can you know you can, it's easier to go back and forth with each other than it was with you know, other channels where they're just, it's going so fast, you know, you've got to slow it all down. You used to be the one slowing it all down and, <laughs> you know, you couldn't really, you couldn't really shoot the breeze in the same way. It's not the same community like it is here. So I think this is just, it's just a cool thing that you're doing over here that I, that I want to support. So. Okay. What? Like, I got to go for just a second. He's getting the dogs again. They keep it's getting free. <laughs> <laughs> go, Rocky, go. So if I'm not mistaken, I think the other um, charge against against um, Chad, because I think there's like the c c conspiracies, right, for the for the murders. But there's also uh, fraud, so, which I'm assuming is around the insurance, which is why they have brought up insurance at different points. Um, and and I'm a, I get a little confused by what his lawyer's trying to do sometimes, where he's really making a big deal about what upstairs means, as if that's going to impeach the witness by them saying upstairs all the time. No, upstairs is above the garage. It's like, okay, I don't know. I'm not sure how that thinks he's, how he thinks that's going to um, get us to think, well, then Chad didn't do it because upstairs, <laughs> that's one of the ones that confuses me that he seems to really hammer that home a lot. So did you, did you have you seen pictures of the house? Um, I have not, but I don't even, does it matter? <laughs> well, well it, we're, even Nate, Nate who does have, photos and has shown them on his lives and stuff and he's circled he says even though prior says and by the way prior owns this house now yeah yeah i saw when yeah. uh 
what's her name got that in there Mel was it Melanie I can't remember yes because yeah well you own it you should know yeah I was like, <laughs> yeah Be because uh, the kids are renting from him and that's how he's getting his funds and being paid for as a private and uh, private lawyer anyway so he this house is this long I it, long, it to me it looks like the the um ark <laughs> Noah's ark Oh, it's arc. Okay. Yeah, and it's a long house. There's this one, it's got one story, and then off of it was a, a an A-frame. A cozy thing. cone. A, a cozy <laughs> cone. The cozy cones in the top. And there's a window at the top. And Nate talked all about where the pictures were taken. That window it view is of where the bodies were located. And the window that, view in the A-frame? Yes, at the top. The so it then it was upstairs. Yes, yes, there is an upstairs. It, he well, then <laughs> he doesn't want to call it that because at one point, uh, I think if I remember correctly in the testimony, and chatters can put this in the chat if they remember differently, but I think that one point when he said that Tammy told him, I'm not feeling good, I'm going to go up to bed. Now, a lot of us say, I'm going to go, most of us, if you don't, I would say up because I do have a basement. And so that would be up. But right. in this one, the house is, is one level. And then the new add-on has an upstairs and there is a whole thing up there where they uh, keep the instruments, whatever the heck that means. I have no idea. But um, Chad said, or I mean, Chad, uh, Nate said that, yes, there is an upstairs and he himself cannot really understand why um uh, prior keeps harping on this and trying to say or trying to like pull it away from there being this upstairs when there is one there is it may not be i think the reason is because there at one point there was a bed something was up there, there was a bed and something else like somebody was living up there and yeah. i kind of wonder why there's such a problem with that information getting out like who was up there who was staying up there well okay so, but but where was tammy's body when she was discovered? Was it in one of the bedrooms on the main floor or was it upstairs? See, that's the thing. And that right there is what has not, they were they were in bed because he said, his story kind of was, from what I heard, he said that she may have rolled out of bed because right. maybe he pulled the covers too hard. And then another thing, he said he woke up or he was awo wait, awakened, awoke, awake, awakened, awakened, like whatever. One. Pick one. <laughs> <laughs> a wokey wokey. He was a wokey wokey when um, he said the covers fell off. So that's not you tugging on the blankets and rolling her out of bed. That's the covers fell off because she rolled out of bed and pulled the covers off of him. That's right. to the story. But if I don't know if they've actually said where that bedroom was because yeah. he did say, up like she said she was going up to bed and the only up would be that loft okay. so was she up there i mean were they sleeping up there was that where their bedroom was i don't know and i i think that that's i wonder if that's part of why uh prior is so intent on this whole upstairs thing not being I, a thing i just don't i don't see why it matters right we, we know that she was found in a bedroom by chad like none of that, nobody's disputing those as the facts of the situation. Uh, they, he did say that he, him and his son Garth moved the body, right? But that was more like they put it back in the bed was the way it yes, sounded. Yes, placed it back, yes. Yeah, it's not like they moved it to a different room and put it in that bed. I mean, that would be more interesting, but nobody's saying that. Nobody's implying that. I mean, I realize, I mean, some of the way that they have to ask questions, right? Because they can't testify. We don't like them giving narratives. Uh, requires them to sort of, just ask sort of silly questions that you hope are going to lead down the path that they want to get to. And it's a struggle sometimes, right? It was with Melanie uh, Pulowski. Like it seemed like they didn't get out of her what they needed to, but her, but her husband was a lot more open with the way he communicated. So it seemed like we got a lot more filled in gaps, which I appreciate. And same thing with Zulima. She's filling in a lot of gaps and explaining some of these finer details where yeah, Melanie was very like, mm, no, I don't know about a lot of stuff. So. Melanie was scared to death. <laughs> she, so I did start reading some of that letter. I uh, I didn't know how to go into a, any recap for this one because there was a lot of information yes. with the two of them from yesterday. And I'm like, I don't even know where to be. I don't want to just sit here and 
maybe read this, you know, read the testimony all the time, you know, over, but which I do have to do because I have to understand for myself what the heck just happened. And yes. when you're running a channel and you're trying to keep track of everything, it's hard to like focus, hone in. So going back and reading Nate's tweets is what helps me see it, you know, because I'm a visual learner. So, but it, it helps me too, because sometimes my mind will have wandered away and I'm like, but I don't want to rewind because I'm like, wait, well, let me just scroll up, see what, see what they put. What was tweeted? Yes. So, <laughs> yes, and that's it. yeah. I have uh, my moderator Linda's on top of that. I used to do the same thing in the other thing I used to do in my former life, but uh, she now does that for me in here, and that's put the those tweets in so that we can see it at the same time. Because there are times when I have to actually, you know, look over, see what was just said, or you know what what's going on, and it, it does help. And I know I I I hope the chatters are you know good with with our strategy yes. of trying to keep us but i wanted to see something up here um when i ask these questions i do have uh, several who know a lot uh dana says ulema and melanie p are co-conspirators that's okay. a hard word um i just read in read in this case so they got limited immunity okay so co-conspirators i'm assuming how like in that they might have known what happened with with the kids and, I think and didn't work forthcoming. I I think that there is something more to it. I think that they I wouldn't be surprised if in their mind they're thinking, okay, uh, they're saying these things and this is our belief and stuff, and the body's gonna die. But then they're thinking, well, you know, they're not gonna really hurt anybody. You know, it'll be natural death, natural causes. So that's, in my opinion, why Alex is being listed as a natural cause. Like all these things Wait, were. You said Alex is being limit is being. Oh, Alex's death is being listed. As. Yes, listed oh, as natural cause. He was listed as the cause. I was like, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. Well, I still. I mean, kind of. But Tammy, for Tammy, yeah, I kind of think there's something more to this. I don't know. I just have this thing. I don't know. Yeah. I have a feeling he was probably there. I, I, okay, so that's all of Zalima's stuff has really kind of had like lots of little details that have made you, at least for me, go, oh, oh, oh. So like. First of all, we're talking about all of this, the castings, right? These these women that would get together and and do the castings. And I'm, I'm assuming it's some level of prayer that they're doing, you know, communally to try to get these these demons out of out of people. And of yes. course, at, at the end of getting a demon out of person, they're going to die. So there's no they're they're an empty vessel at that point. So yeah, I guess in that way, if you believe that Tylee or anybody else has a demon in them the end result would be death, I would assume, unless they just haven't thought this through, which is very possible. <laughs> yeah, but I think that what ha I think that some of the deaths didn't happen the way that they were supposed to. And so then they had to say, well, because they, Lori did tell them, well, if the, we do this casting out, it means that the body has to die. And then that's why Charles had three spirits in him. The first one, they casted the spirit out. That was, the first one was- uh, Ned? Ned? Yes, Ned. And then there was Hiplos. And then there's Garrett was the third. And then... Who picks these course, names? I don't know. But <laughs> then all of a sudden, I'm like... Nothing Garrett. scarier than the demon Garrett coming at you. Like, it's a, it's a, I, feel bad. I felt bad for uh, the Pulowski's attorney. His name is Garrett. I'm like, oh... <laughs> No wonder they chased him out of the courtroom yesterday. He there he is. There's the demon. demon. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry, Mr. Smith. I was just kidding. But um, yeah, so there. So I want to know why that why that Lori says he had three. How many times had they tried with him? You yeah. know. Yes. Because there's if there if her thing is that there's if one if the if the dark spirit leaves then the body is supposed to die, but he didn't die. And then she says, oh, that's because another spirit came in. So exactly. Yeah. So oh, there's he's, he's and it's got a stupid name, just like the last one did. <laughs> I think what she, I think that they've done the castings several, several times. And she yes. had to come up with a story that, well, he's not dead. So and and also I also there's something else that I want to put. So if Alex is the one supposed to be doing this and it seems like Alex is not that great of a shot. I mean, he's not, <laughs> he's kind of a, I don't know if he's purposely meant to be not that great of a, of a marksman. Um, but then 
I see Lori say from Zulema in her stuff, she says that the idiot can never do anything for himself. Who was she talking about? I think she was talking about her brother. I it, think. I think it's a real possibility. It's a real possibility. Especially because Zulima, yeah, the way Zulima was was telling it. And then later on, we hear another phone call, uh, not a phone call, but we hear Zulima recounting a phone call where Alex, where she was hearing just Alex's side of it. And then he says, you know, I think they're going to pin this on me. I think I'm going to be the fall guy. And then he he died that night, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So he went to Mexico that morning, right? Goes to Mexico. I don't, th I think he went alone. Um, they Why sent to Mexico to get some medicine or something. Okay. And then he died, got sick. He got sick that evening. And it, one of the, one of our channels will say they'll give the timeline if he died that night or soon after that, but he got sick that night. And one of the things that he had now, he, he was uh, the, or not, uh, did they do an autopsy? Whatever it was, they said that he had a double or uh, embolism, pulmonary embolism in both lungs. And so that's what he okay. died of. They're calling it natural causes. And I'm like, okay, what do you do in Mexico that would give you an embolism? Then I didn't know until yesterday when I think it was lemon curd said that he also had pink foam, the same as Tammy. So, well, so yeah, I think a pink foam is, so they, they had fluid in their lungs, right? Both of them did. Tammy did. And I'm, I'm assuming Alex did. And yeah, that oh. fluid is what's making the foam happen as you're trying to get the air in and get the air and you're just sort of aerating, aerating the fluid that's in your lungs. And, and that's why that's happening. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of reasons. There are definitely drugs, you know, interactions that can make that happen. Um, and various forms of asphyxiation that can make that happen. So <laughs> And, and the embolisms, if that's what he died for, or that's what they're putting as his death, then what else caused that? So I really struggle with this natural causes thing. I think there's yeah. just so much more, especially since he gets the phone call. He has this horrible feeling from Zulima tells us he's has this, he's down. He's like, he, he's saying, you know, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm going to be the fall guy. And the next thing you know, he gets sick and dies. It just doesn't sit well. And sadly, it was wasn't looked looked at. There's nothing to exhume, so there's nothing no, nothing that can be done with that. That's why, in my opinion, why Pryor thinks that he can pin this on Alex. Yeah, it, he also so, really seems to be going after Melanie Ginn for some reason, which I'm not really sure why. You know, I think yeah, I think he wants that whole you you know more than you're than you're letting on, you know, because she did leave earlier than Zulema. Zulema was in there for the long haul. I don't know exactly when it it, it where her part, you know, she she was still in there. And then I think that prior asked, who was it that asked, do you still believe this stuff? Because I heard that as I was doing something, and she's all like, No, I don't. Do you believe you can do, you know, the weather or whatever? <laughs> you know, are you the girl with the pointer of the weather no you're not her you don't get to be her you're not good at it you're not a, you're not a good weather girl sorry she so, should have practiced more i can't believe yeah. she, she couldn't figure out how to do it yeah. i i also you know i also enjoyed her testimony because I, I was having a hard time figuring out how did chad decide that somebody was dark what was he using and now we you know we talked a little bit about a pen not a pendulum a pendant yesterday and then today you know we're talking about vibrations and I'm assuming that's what the pendant was for the pendulum. So, yeah. They, yeah so, I, I think that the pendant, I wonder if that was a mistake in, in the, they meant to say the pendulum and yeah. they called it the, because uh, you know, I, I know what a pendulum is. We all know that whole thing where you try to figure out your baby's gender by dangling a thing over the belly. That's an absolute whatever. If you want to go and you believe it fine. But uh, anyway, I wonder if uh, the, this thing, I don't think he believe. I just, do you believe that? I mean, I said, you're going, how do they believe got, this stuff? It, it got more and more convoluted, but she had illustrations, all of these circles, right? We've got five circles of, I mean, earth, I guess, different worlds that we're being reincarnated into and at different levels. And you've come to this earth this many times. And honestly, the Mormon faith is rife for for finding people who will believe this because it's already part of their doctrine, right? That right. not necessarily the five the five worlds. That part of, I, that doesn't sound like I don't remember that being in there. But you know, when you talk about the celestial 
the terrestrial and the celestial kingdoms, right? So you've got your three levels of heaven. Right. Uh, and so you can see how they can easily use that to grow and grow and grow. And, and you're hearing it happen that, you know, these are people that are faithful that have been just ingrained in the Mormon faith and are looking for more and more and more and they're getting it. And I mean, he sprinkled a little Harry Potter in there, you know, <laughs> he sprinkled a little bit of super Mario brothers in there. Oh, wait, you're 80%. You, you've made it to 80% to get to the next level. Now you've got to fight the big boss. Okay. <laughs> let's fight the big boss. And now you can move up to the next level. You know what I mean? It's like, what are we talking about? Oh. Yes, and I wanted to put this. Uh, Rakin says, "I wonder if Malachite had anything to do with their passings." It's interesting; they all had pink foam. Does Malachite cause pink foam? <laughs> I, don't I don't know. know. I'm not familiar. I don't with that. know anything about stones and 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 uh, gyms and all that stuff. And you can probably hear my dog whining. I can hear her. Oh, this dog! Ah. I yeah. keep having to tell my son, "Come get her." <laughs> she's uh, got, she has Cushing's, and she's very whiny now. Always hungry and always thirsty. Yeah. So, uh, but uh, I don't know. Uh, I have no idea about the stones, or or I do know that they do believe like the energy stuff. I guess uh, like different things. I, I know that color is also a thing because if you notice, Chad wears different tie colors. I don't think that's on. That's just what you know, Mr. Pryor pulled out of the closet that morning. I think that he tells him, "I need a, I need a yellow tie today." Tomorrow, I like the yellow tie. That's my favorite one. I'm like, ooh, it's yellow tie. Tomorrow, today. I need the red <laughs> M tie. Every uh, there's a, a YouTuber named uh, Linda from It's a Crime. She calls it the red M tie, oh, murder yes. tie. <laughs> yes, I got you. And sometimes they'll have matching ties or something. So he's got, they're big into colors and stuff. So I would be interesting, interested to know more about what this phone, not just the phone, but what does the Malachite have to do with that? Because I have no idea. That's a good thing. And I don't know. Raking, if you know, you can put it in chat. I have no idea. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Uh, your channel will get that. Make <laughs> they're constantly it's hearing true. me. true. <laughs> You are delightful. You are magic, and you gotta not don't don't talk yourself down. Just believe that you're magic. Chad Dagle oh, oh. believes he's magic. Surely Addie can believe that she's magic. <laughs> oh, I don't know if you want <laughs> different kind of magic. Yeah. Kind of magic. Oh, okay, okay. So, okay. Uh, I think it's fantastic and very helpful. Okay, uh, Linda uh, rocks with Nate's tweets. Uh, Me too. Yes, Linda. Thank you so much for what you put in that, and she's good about making sure that it's, you know, appropriate timing for when they're talking. Yes. I sit here and go, "Yep, a tweet came up. Here it is in the chat." And then I go, "Oh wait, I'm, I forget that I hear stuff before everybody else because I'm running the thing." So, <laughs> but uh, uh, let's see. Uh, Mal says they thought predictions and not like anybody would murder them. I think that's it right there. I think that. It was all about what would eventually happen in their life. That's where Zulema and Gib, and then when she heard JJ was missing, and then they tried to, you know, she took, Lori says JJ's with Melanie, and now Melanie's got this thing, and she decided, yeah, I'll go along with it, and then felt the guilt, and then went to the cops. That made her dark. So then now she's out. She now wouldn't be surprised. Dark. If she wasn't in line at one point, got his being... pendulum out. Oh, she's dark now. She's dark yeah. now. Yeah, wouldn't be have been su surprised if she would have been, you know, among, and got out in time. And then, um, uh, let's see, we got uh, <laughs> Mel. Maybe he ate. Oh, ah, maybe he ate a bad tequila worm. Whoops. <laughs> 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 yeah. Oh, Stevie, Stevie says, I'll be listening on the, oh, I'm glad you're here with us. Yeah, and so I want to know why. That's the thing. She questions Ma Malachite. I, I want to know if there's something to that. Um, you know, other than it being a, a, an energy stone that's supposed to mean something. If you look, I did look it up when they, when the rings were mentioned about what it meant. And it's just a bunch of the energy with stone stuff and I I forget what it is, but it, uh, it's like okay, whatever. <laughs> I maybe, mean, they, I, maybe maybe that's what Chad used to make his portal in the closet so that he could get in contact with a 
glory all the time. What's with the portals? And now I'm in a Marvel movie. I don't understand. <laughs> somebody, I saw this in Nate's chat uh, when this first started. Somebody called it the portal potty. That's what you keep calling it. I laugh every time you say it. I laugh every time. You say it. I'm sorry. I have. I have to. I always give them credit, but that that was one of those chatters. I I think it was a. Somebody with the last name Sorison. I remember Sorensen or something from the chat. But yeah, I, it's hilarious. I don't know. I this whole portal thing. I my sons play these games that have that kind of stuff in it. And I go, oh my goodness, are you kidding me? I, I mean, mean you can even even Minecraft, you can go through a portal. Ooh, I'm in right. the nether. I'm in the nether now. Woo! Right. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, just... Pokemon Go. There you go. I don't know if I've ever gone through a portal in Pokemon Go. <laughs> yeah, Wendy H says, Melanie Gibb is not a great person. Oh, I think that she knows a, knew a lot more and bowed out at the right time. My opinion, and I forgot to put this up. Hold on one second. Well, I, I mean, I think when Lori had a different when Lori had a different answer to everybody about where the kids were, and then she said, Oh, they're with Melanie. Melanie's like, Whoa, why are you bringing me into this? I don't, I don't have the kids. I am not part of this. I, I don't blame her for being like, nah, especially if they did just believe these are predictions. This isn't, we're going to make this stuff happen. Yeah. And I think that I wouldn't be surprised if the conversation with Ian, uh, with, with the other, with Melanie and all these, you know, when they started feeling like, okay, this is, this is different. I mean, we can believe that these things are going to happen and that people will have this in their, you know, afterlife and they'll be back and have lots of lives and all this stuff. But you're talking now about the life ending. I mean, and then all of a sudden the kids come up missing. So that right there was probably like, a, you know, a screech in the brakes for, um, you know, the, this, this plan. And that's why everybody had to go on the run. And then if you heard yesterday, there was a lot of the phone calls back and forth. Nothing was really said in those calls. That was, those are the ones that Ian was recording on his flash drive keychain stick thingy. And nothing was like really said per se, but it was the intent and stuff of like, we've all got to move around. You can't be here in this part anymore. It's now considered, um, what is it? Rexburg is going to go through earthquakes and, and whatever and all this stuff. And that's when yes, I guess people are going to starve at the McDonald's over there in Rexburg. He can see it. He can see the future. It's going to be bad. That but McDonald's. Oh, that. <laughs> Uh, okay but you can uh, still help people by through the portals go through the portals and help people i mean it was it had so many crazy layers to it that i i, I no wonder you know ian was like mm, this sounds silly to me you know like he he seemed like he was in it just a little bit in the beginning right like okay yeah i'm open to hearing about this stuff but right but it, but it was it, it's it's fantasy land it's fantasy land and of course Okay, I, I was talking to my husband about this trial. And, you know, there's different points where my husband goes, how come their spouses didn't talk them out of this stuff? And I'm like, well, because they killed their spouses. They they killed the spouses that would have talked them out of it, right? One, one assumes that Tammy, at least on some level, was keeping Chad from going fully over the deep end, at least to some level. Let's keep him tethered to this, this earthly realm <laughs> as much as she could. And that Charles maybe was doing the same thing for Lori because they're both cuckoo dookoos. But now Lori and Chad have found each other. They're both equally insane and they're feeding each other with their insanity. And now we don't need these other two people that are just holding them back, that are tethering them to this world when they are supposed to be up in the celestial kingdom. I mean, Chad used to be the Holy Spirit, apparently, in one of his past lives. I don't know how that happens. But <laughs> Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, well, um, if you've ever been around anyone that you know, and in, in, you know, who does believe in past lives, it's an interesting ride. I will say uh, it's a it's a it's a thing. And his happens to be the son of Jesus. No, the, the brother of Jesus. The brother. Yeah. But remember, <laughs> remember, uh, dear one, uh, do you forget that your religion, your LDS religion believes that the brother of Jesus is Satan? So is that who you are? <laughs> oh, <laughs> I forgot. Oh, no, he's the other brother. I'm not, you know? I'm not really mad at the idea of past lives. It's just the way that he's just trying to manipulate right. every woman he comes in contact with, right? 
I mean, he tries the men too, but it seems like the men are quite as receptive, right? But he tries, except for Alex, who was pretty receptive. Uh, but the women, like he's using it as like a, you know, his, this, this is his moves to try to get them into, you know, into bed with him. Let's be real. That's what he was doing. And that's why I think in 2016, when he first started talking about Tammy was going to have a short life, he didn't even know Lori Valley yet. I think it was, what is it, Julie Rowe? I think he he had a thing going with Julie Rowe. And so he, you know, because they were both thinking the same kind of stuff. They were believing these these big ideas that are a little bit outside of the realm of, of traditional Mormonism. Uh, and yeah, he was getting ready then to, to, to out, to out, to oust Tammy, right? He was, he was laying, he was laying the bait in the same way that he likes to lay the bait to the woman saying, oh, I used to be married to you. I mean, he said that to other people. I'm pretty sure he said that to Julie Rowe. He may have said it to Melanie Gibb for all I know. He definitely, he said he was married to Lori Vallow like seven times in seven yeah. previous lives. Of course, of course. And she just ate it up. Oh. Yeah, it it the the part right there where um, it, it ju the this whole Julie Rowe thing. There's a whole another thing. Now she believes in all of the same stuff, maybe slightly whatever hers are. I don't know. I've never heard of her. I've never read. I've never don't have a clue. But he likes that. And there was who was it that was saying that it was hard to see them off. Uh, I call it canoodling, like up up in each other's stuff, really close and doing yes, this whole canoodle. stuff together. Canoodling and she, feels like a fine word. Yes, they were they were a yeah. little too little too friendly, little too friendly. Yes, and then you and then here's a Tammy walking in, you know, in the back, watching all this happen, watching him be, in my opinion, flirtatious. Even though it's it may not have the same, it probably does. It means the same for him because I'm sure he flirts with everything with a skirt. But uh, <laughs> but. Uh, Seeing this and knowing about this also, so to me, that's another person he could have tried to bring into his fold, but I don't think he would have ever been able to get her to do for him what he has been able to get all these other women to do. Because I think, in my opinion, just from just thinking that she possibly is on the same realm as he is up here, wanting to be that guru, that person who has all the stuff. And you can't have two gurus. Sorry. I, I think that, you know, she does believe that she's got her own stuff going on. And he was enamored with that. And so he was kind of looking at her as maybe, you know, maybe I can, you know, try and bring her in. But, you know, you know, no, you can't have two gurus in the same level. It doesn't work. So no. let me see. We got uh, Rakin. Let's see what this is. I believe Melanie Gibb was knowledge beyond our awareness. Only her former close circle knows the extent. She only cares about self-preservation, in my opinion. And I'm sorry about my dog. It's probably everyone can hear my dog whining. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm gonna have to stop her. So you, oh, I'll be right back. I gotta. All right, I'll just, I'll just keep talking. Hold on saying. a second. I'll be right back. <laughs> uh, no, it, it is interesting. I guess I, I don't know what the hate is for Melanie Gibb. Really, I, I don't know if I've seen it. I, I must have. I must. Maybe I haven't deep dove into her enough. I just think they're all just a little bit cuckoo, but I don't know. I think maybe because I thought her husband, when he was on the stand, stand seemed very, he seemed normal, you know? And what he said about his wife seemed like, it made her seem like a, a normal person to me. And the fact that, you know, she did go to the police and say, okay, I don't actually have, you know, I don't have JJ. And even when she did indicate that she might have had JJ. She didn't say she was where Lori said. So I don't know. I, I, I'm curious to know, you know, what I'm missing in terms of, of Melanie Gibb. But I guess I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I don't know. You think that she has more awareness of what's going on. So you think that she, that she knew what happened to the children well before uh, they came forward, before she came forward to the police about it? Uh, it's, it's a curiosity. I, I don't know the answer to that. Um, I do think, I think uh, Addie talked earlier and she said um, that she feels like Chad needs to be exalted all of the time, right? And so he doesn't feel exalted in the traditional Mormon church um, and he shouldn't be. So now he has found all of these other ways to aggrandize himself, which I do find interesting. I do think that it was an astute observation by Addie to think of him that way, that he's looking for exaltation. Everybody is looking to him to bless him 
to bless them. He's the one that is seeing the future. He is figuring out he's, you know, how how dark or light everybody is. He he wants the adulation. I think you got that right, Eddie. I'm back. <laughs> I I do with with him, um, with the way he speaks, the way he does these things that he doesn't really necessarily uh he qualifies himself he may not necessarily be qualified to do them like with the priesthood blessings he is a priest according to the um lds church because at 18 they all they have all the ability yeah. to be blessed or be to be whatever it's called you got to come in and they give you your um the priesthood blessing. they give you the priesthood, priesthood. yeah yeah so that you know and then he, that gives him I guess the ability to do that, but he doesn't have a ranking in the church. He was the, was it like the secretary of the something, something he was, <laughs> he was the office administrator or something to that effect. Uh, and so he didn't have a place and he was never really rising up, be becoming more than that. And, and, and I think that's what he needs. He needs to have that exaltation. He needs everyone uh, to tell him how good he is and, and wonderful. And he speaks in that voice, you know, when he's giving his blessings yes. and it's kind of. And his blessings lot. and his blessings appear to all be manipulative as well. Right. He's telling you certain things, one, to get you to believe him and to keep, you know, wanting to be near him and to keep. Yeah. So he can control you more, but he also is telling you what position he wants you to be in the things that he wants you to do for him. Ultimately, he's giving you clues to that along the way, right? He's, he's calling Alex a warrior all the time and a protector and all of these things. And Alex, you know, seems to be a little bit simple minded. It feels like, I don't know, but it feels like that, you know, easily a, manipulated, easily manipulated. It says he's, this is his first time on earth. This is his first time here in the world. So he's a brand new spirit. So, you know, of course he's going to lean on this person who he views as, you know, as this, this, you know, very high light authority, you know, who speaks directly with God and, and the ancestors. So of course, Alex is going to lean into this, somebody that's giving him importance and value in life. And um, I think Wendy was talking earlier about um, Lori's third husband, Tylee Ryan's dad. And uh, he also died under mysterious circumstances involving something related to his heart you know, something, something's going on there. They all read just a little bit different, but also just the same enough. But um, um, Alex, uh, you know, I, th I think he might've went to jail for an assault of that man, of, of Tyler Ryan's dad, who was an abuser of some sort, it appears like. It appears like he was not a good guy. And so maybe initially there was good reason for him to be a protector of Lori. And now it has just moved into the absurd the absurd and so i and i i think that in the blessing that uh that chad gave to alex i think that there was uh oh <laughs> no <laughs> sorry i saw, never mind sorry i saw something anyway uh i think that there was a lot said in what he had to say about what was going to eventually happen to alex i think he was laying it out, the things he was saying, you're going to be this in the next life and you're going to be this good guy over here and you're going to be doing this. And it was all about what, not what he was going to do for him now or whatever, but on the other side of the veil. Um, Very and possible. He did, he already, say, did he say he was going to have a short life as well? Did he say that about he, it? I wonder. He didn't, from what I remember from listening to it, I don't recall him saying that it was going to be like his life shortened or anything like that, but it was just all the stuff he was talking about with thing was things that he was going to do beyond the veil. Um, and, and I, that's a, that's a LDS term. It's a whole thing. If you've ever seen a temple, uh, uh, endowment, whatever it's called, I think it's an endowment ceremony. There is a YouTuber named no name, Nate, no name, Noah, um, and he has, he went in and filmed, it was like five hours or something, I don't know, uh, and filmed, secretly filmed the whole temple ceremony, because that's something that no one gets to see. And then he took it into the celestial room and all the stuff. It's it's a lot, and it's really interesting to see, but it it's, it's different. But it, it's their belief, it's their thing, it is what it is. But um, I think that, to, so that 
what I'm getting to is that that whole temple thing, it's about veil and there's curtains and there's, you know, sheer stuff and all the whatever. And it's beyond the veil is the celestial room. And that's where that it's all, you know, outside of this life type of stuff. Now, I don't know if LDS believe that, that people are, come and go and have, you know, come back or whatever. I know that they believe that they are, they were, they're spirit babies in heaven that come down and get their, their bodies. And there's lots of spirit babies and there's tons. You got to have all the kids so that you can get all those spirit babies down and get them in their bodies. I do know that that is a thing and why there's, I think that's in my opinion, why LDS is so uh, family oriented because of that. And also you got the whole, everybody gets their own uh, planet, planet with the, <laughs> Yeah, they're you become planet. goddesses and go gods and goddesses with your own of your own planet. So you kind of have to, yeah. But um, <laughs> but anyway, the I, I had a thought with that. But it just with with this, it was all it's all connected to this whole thing where he was telling uh, Alex what was going to happen, and I don't know how many people picked up on that. Uh, if if you know if you kind of got a hint or a feeling that that's kind of what he was doing with that. But uh, let, I want to see. Uh, oh. We haven't started yet, have we? <laughs> no, uh, no, I, I've got it. I can see. Okay. Yeah, I have it up here on the thing. It's, yeah, as soon as it comes up, we'll just switch over Wendy. to it. Wendy, yeah. that's a question. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so Wendy's, I wonder how long it would have taken for Chad and Lori to have tried unaliving one. See, now. A thought popped into my head during this whole thing. And I have a feeling that Chad wouldn't have stopped with Lori. I think that it would have just kept on. He's a, and sorry, I, he's a serial unaliver. At least he's got the mentality for it. And but, she, but he didn't start until, until Lori. There's at least, I don't see any indication that he still has anybody else. Is there? Well, he met, or he started saying in 2016 that Tammy was going to die before the age of 50. True. So he had started this whole thing way before he e even met Lori. Lori was, uh, he met her in 2018. So there was two years that he was going through this telling everybody and all of his little con uh, convention, whatever the, you know, conferences and stuff that he, his wife was, wasn't going to make it to 50. She died at 49. Yeah. So you're so, right. You're right. So he clearly did have it in his head. Before Lori got there, which is the what reason that I thought, well, he knew her in 2018. So I wouldn't have put it past him that he would use her till he couldn't anymore until she saw the light. She and was, then she's never going to see the light. Yeah. I think I she, mean, would, she would have taken him out first. I, I think <laughs> <laughs> that's another thought I had. Maybe they'd have taken like somebody, they'd have taken each other out. Unaliving one another is perfect, what Wendy said, because then that's a, yeah, to come down to what is that um, movie with the uh, the two that are fighting and they fall down a, a f like in the center thing and a big old chandelier crashes on them. It's the two fighting with each other. It's a whole movie a long time ago. That's what I picture in my War head. War of the Roses is War of the Roses. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, but yeah, so I don't, uh, so there's that with, you know, I just don't think it would have stopped where it stopped. I think it would have kept on going. There would have been all this thing that would have just kept going and it would have been, we're going to, this person's dark, that person's dark, and we're just going to give them something pink to foam them up or whatever it is. I, I still don't think, Possibly. I think that that's whatever the foam is. I don't know. Yeah. I think one yeah. day it's going to come out. Guess what? <laughs> we found I, the, what the foam is. I would love to know. I would love to know because it, it does feel like something that's connecting everything, but also there's just enough difference there that you're not sure. Um, it, it is weird to think about when you think about when Charles Vallow died to when Alex died. We're talking five months. This is a five month stretch that all of these things happened. It was like every, about three weeks, somebody was no more. <laughs> it is crazy when you think about how fast it was going. It was like Charles, Tammy, I think somewhere in there, um, you know, Melanie's ex-husband was, you know, shot at. <laughs> and, yeah. And then, yeah, then the kids do, you know, one kid. And then a few weeks later, the other. And then it's just, it's just boom, 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 boom. And it is crazy when you think about just how fast, what a short time period all of this was happening in. I mean, it felt short just when you think about how quick 
they got Chad and Lori got married. But when you really start stacking those dates up on top of each other, it it's absurd. It's absurd. I've had to during this whole thing, I've had to keep the timeline up because they, it goes back and forth so many times between the different things that I can't put. Like, okay, this happened, and so what's the time? I've tried to keep dates like uh, Tammy's death and the and JJ going missing and the last time David Warwick saw him, that kind of thing, and trying to keep, because you got them placing them here. What they're trying to do is they're trying to place these people here on a timeline that is just everywhere. And it is frustrating, and it is like, it I is. cannot, especially for somebody who cannot remember dates, <laughs> I cannot remember my own. Oh, yeah. Speaking of that, today is a friend of our Cody Yates' birthday is today. Oh, happy birthday, happy Cody. Cody. <laughs> so, tonight on John Yates' channel, we're going to have a birthday party for Cody. So Cody Yates in the background, the background husband. <laughs> but um, anyway, so uh, with this, there was something that I saw. I wanted to see this right here. So, uh, so I'm thinking the same thing, whether Chad unalived Tammy or was an accomplice, he can't function among the general public. He'll probably start casting out demons again. Probably in jail. <laughs> he'll probably be that he'll be it'll become the next um, you know, pr the prison prison M, you know, like they have prison justice as their own thing. Right. And it'll be his form of prison justice. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I agree wholeheartedly. It does not matter whether it was by his hands or whether he was using Alex as a tool. He is just as guilty. There's no way he didn't know. Children don't just magically end up in your backyard. You know what I mean? Like you, you knew they were there. You, you, there's no way you didn't facilitate that happening. There's just no way. I don't, and, and his, his lawyer's doing nothing to separate him for, for me, you know, saying, well, yes, we can all acknowledge that he was a cheater and he wasn't maybe not a great person, but that doesn't mean that he did all of these things. Right. How do you, how did the kids get there? You, you have he's been unable to separate Chad, you know, from the events to me, you know, from at least that portion of it. You, you knew, you knew. Yeah, I think that uh, we, we we heard, uh, I think it was prosecution. I forget who they were talking with, but they were t mentioning that uh, Chad or uh, Lori said they were going to go on this trip, and then Alex was supposed to go with was it uh, Zulu? No, it was Melanie. I guess it was Melanie during her testimony. That they were supposed to go on this vacation or go to Hawaii or what? I think it was Hawaii. Yeah. And he said, or she said, um, Lori said, no, Alex is staying home. He was supposed to go, but he's staying home. Chad yes. needs his help. What was that about? So right? the implication. And that is another one of those things where they left it up there for the jury to keep at the top of the thoughts. You know, when you're in this watching these trials, I always say we're the 13th juror. You got to sit there and look at this. And when they say move to strike or whatever, you know how difficult it is to move to strike stuff once you heard it. And they know exactly. that. They, they know, know that even though you're not supposed to, but if you're a human being, you're going to go, okay, okay. Oh, oh, I can't, I can't think of that. But with the, um, with this thing where he was helping, you have uh, Alex and his phone pinging now they went through all that the the stuff where it's, his uh, stuff was pinging from the location on the property where JJ was in the pet cemetery. Now they tried to say, well, you can't. It doesn't. It's not a necessarily an exact ping. It's you know within a certain area. But for me, well, as <laughs> as a juror, I that's something that's been in my head this entire time. Like as a juror, hearing that, knowing that it he was in that area on the day. Uh, in that same spot or whatever, when JJ was found, that that is something that my mind can't, it, it's like, okay, that puts him there. So if you have now, you have Lori saying this, what we just heard from Melanie, we have this thing. There is, I, I just don't think that Alex did this. At first I thought, well, Alex is the fall guy. I mean, he's the guy, he's the one that's doing all this stuff, but I don't think so in order to carry this stuff out, I think there has to be a system of people working together, you know, and, and you got to keep your hands as clean as possible on all sides. I also want to know what this whole thing was that I think it was Zulema brought it up or is it Melanie again um, about the, uh, the, the shot for the paintball gun and Brandon was supposed to be five something away. Like it was, it wasn't 
supposed to hit. Remember, she was supposed to miss. Anybody remember those? The, the, I, yeah, the, I don't. I, I do remember the, that, but I, I don't actually remember what she was. I, I'm not sure if I could. I followed what she was getting at. I'm like to refresh to me. me that one. Right. To me, it felt like they were. she was trying to say that the intention wasn't to take him out. The intention was to say uh, it, it didn't happen. It missed. So somebody tried, you know, it tried to, tried to be this oh, thing. So that's God's will, right? If, if it missed, then that was God's will. He's, he's right. And so now again. she she has a good like, so it would have been the next thing. But she passed that that night right after that. Right. It was wasn't that the same night. I was mentioned these things and see what the chat says if they're mm -hmm. following me. But um but I think that that timeline or whatever, I, I, I didn't understand the 100%, but I think that that's maybe what this thing was. He was supposed to miss, and I don't understand why he was told, from what it sounds like, that he was told to miss. I don't know. I'd like to. Uh, oh, okay. So, so I think I think I get what you're getting at, yes. is that you think that that's another way that they were making it. Alex look culpable, look like he's the fall guy, looks like he's the one that was trying to take a real shot at her when he was just sent there to miss and to deflect so that it didn't look like Chad did it. Is that right. what you're saying? So, okay. Okay, yeah, gotcha. because he's got, uh, they have him doing things and talking about things and why his gun jammed and or whatever, didn't misfired or whatever because of cold and he looked that stuff up and all this stuff fits and places him there, um, in my opinion, even though they were really trying to, you know, prior tried to deflect that by bringing up the first, it was the autistic child in that neighborhood, the autistic teen, and then the bipolar teen, and tried to throw that in there to that really. But uh, I can see, uh, so I kind of think that's just how I kind of see it in my head is that maybe they are trying, they said he knew when he got this call from them that Zulema talked, mentioned. That when he or was it Melanie? No, Zulima, because they're married. That's right. So when Zulima he, he gets this call and his whole demeanor changes, he then realizes I they're gonna they're gonna pin it all on me. And I think that that's what Zulima is trying to say is that they are all involved, but he is going to be the scapegoat. He's gonna be the one they're gonna stick it on the back of and run with it, and then they were just gonna yeah. go off into the sun. So we are about, well, they're, they're never, they're about five minutes off usually, so not too bad. So we got a little bit and I've, I can see it. We can actually put this, let me see. I have to find it. There, now we can see it. Oh, let's, uh, ah, we'll go with that. Yeah. So we got, th that's just my, my kind of thinking and trying to put all this together. Usually when I'm watching trials and I stuff, like I, I try not to put my own opinion on, you know, normally, because that's what, you know, you gotta, you gotta kind of look at the evidence or whatever, but we know all this stuff that happened for the last four years and stuff that's been said in the media and Melanie going on her live with Nate. Remember that's another interview that Nate Eaton did with Melanie Gibb. Uh, he also did a uh, interview with uh, both Melanie and Ian uh, Pulowski. He actually spoke yesterday and said that he has had done a an interview with uh, Julie Rowe. Okay. But things in that time frame, when when he did that interview, stuff started happening and things changed quick so quickly that they decided not to publish that interview. Mm -hmm. And they're now trying to decide on whether or not they're going to actually uh, publish it. And I think it should. I think it would be interesting for us to see. I'd love to see Julie Rose interview with Nate Eaton, just to kind of see where her head was in all of that. And if there's any connection with her in that at all, I don't know. They're not really saying there, there is, is she going to be a witness? We don't know. I have no clue. It'd be interesting to hear her side and I may have to Google her and kind of yeah. get an idea just to kind of see who she really is. Cause I have no clue. Never heard of her. But I don't normally follow this kind of stuff, but I just want to see where she, you know, like her brain and how her brain and his brain could have worked together. Oh, I, I think I think she's just like that. I think she was very spiritual, but spiritual in a way that feels delusional, you know, like just, <laughs> you, you try know, so, <laughs> you, you try I, so hard. Yeah, go, go ahead. ahead. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do try. Like, yeah, you don't want to offend anybody, but like, it 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 takes it to like a level that 
it doesn't make it, it doesn't make sense to the vast majority of the population. Yeah, I think she might talk to the dead, or or she might see the future. She's I think she's one of those people that has extra gifts, which I'm not saying they're not real, but they're hard to believe, generally speaking. So right, right. I've I've learned over the years uh, the. You know, to leave my judgments, you know, if you if it's your faith, your belief, that's your thing, as long as you're not out doing this kind of stuff. Exactly. <laughs> then I'm exactly I mean, you and now you've got me you've got me all messed up thinking that maybe Alex didn't do any of these. And that oh. he was because he was never, I swear, he was never alone in any of these circumstances. There was always somebody else with him, you know. And so uh, we see him, you know, he's with he's with JJ and he's just you know, hugging the baby to sleep, right? We don't know what happened before that. We only see this part. We only see the small portion of what happened. You know, he, uh, maybe it was none of it was him. You know, he comes into to Charles, you know, the fight with Charles and, and Lori and possibly Ty Lee. He comes into that scenario that's already happening, it sounds like, you know, and it's like, he's he's never, he's he, he could be a patsy all the way through, all the way through. He Tonight, can never, he can, he can never do anything himself. The words of Lori. I want to know. I tell you, I'm telling you, that's Alex. She's talking. Oh, about. That's think, her brother. I think you've just decoded something for me, Addie. You've decoded it. You've broken something down, and now I can't stop <laughs> thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so that. If there's so there's so many as or the avenues to this whole thing and thoughts and whatever that you can like really break it down and just go I I can see this happening I because she said this well we'll look at it this this it, pulling it out and looking at each um, portion I remember a couple of days ago I was reading oh it was when uh, during the JJ stuff when they were talking about JJ I barely got through that I will tell you I did uh, I did I did internally cry. And I got a uh, verklempt a couple times while reading that. That was difficult when they were talking about the, the you know the parts where what happened with the kids. That was a lot. But there are so many questions that I have as to why things were done the way they were done. Why were, was he taped? Why was all this stuff done? The manner in which? What is okay. that? Well. It's interesting you say that because I think today, I, I think I missed when, when, when it was said, but I, I saw it in the, you know, when you were doing the tweets where it talked about the different ways of getting the spirit out, right? You know, after the casting, there's there was fire and there was, I don't know, there was like several different things, right? And I don't, they haven't talked a lot that I've noticed about what was done with, with um, Tylee's body, but it was, right. it was, it was bad. You know, right. there was more, it seemed like a little bit more love and care was taken with JJ's body than with Tylee's. And could it have been because, you know, one, we did Ty, they did Tylee's first, but because they still believed that they were casting spirits out of her. Okay, well, now let's try fire. Now let's try all of these terrible things. Um, and so, uh, yeah. It's just, it, it's just, messes, it messes me up a little bit. So, so now, so now I, I want to go back. What I'm going to do la later on, maybe over the weekend is go back and look at what they had to say about the, the castings and stuff like that. And what, cause I bet you anything that some of that has to do with, with a lot of that. Um, I felt like with Tylee, there was something different in the way she was handled. Mm -hmm. It uh, just maybe out of issues with mom. You know, like, like there's, I know that there are issues with, from what we've heard that from family that mom and uh, daughter had some issues. I mean, what, who's, whose kid don't you have, you know, there are yeah. times when you have stuff with your kid, but you don't do this kind of stuff to them. But uh, just, I, when I look at that stuff, like what was done and I can't get that the JJ thing out of my head. That's Tylee is, is different in the, I feel like there was probably way more you know but what and what what was their thought process what was their feeling i don't i did hear that uh melanie i mean that uh, Lori was they say she was good with jj she was a good mom or whatever and that she you know even though she wasn't her he wasn't her natural born son um but what is the connection like what was the thought process in the moments of all this stuff with the with the casting and the whole thing and 
then bringing it all together and then how they found them. That's, that's, I look at stuff like that, uh, the why, you know, what, why was this done? Not just that it was done, but why? Right. And I, uh, let's see, Francis says, yes, and Lori, Chad were for themselves. Chad just thinks his calm, introverted behavior makes him innocent. Lori used his brother the same way Chad manipulated his followers. For yeah, sure. I, now somebody said that Alex was the older sibling and Lori has a younger sister, which we have seen her sister. Um, I, I have in the media. Sorry, my dogs are about to howl now. The mailman is here. Not the mailman. <laughs> I have a, I have, oh, I have a doodle, a labradoodle, and this dog is the best dog ever, but he just is the most vocal thing. You can hear it. Yeah. He sounds <laughs> oh. cute. Though. It sounds cute. He's, he's adorable. Uh, he, I just heard my son saying, okay, dog, hush. So, <laughs> so it, yeah, I, so manipulation. And I think that uh, she actually manipulated him. I heard, um, things about this, this their, their relationship between Lori and Alex, that they had a very different relationship. Some, uh, they, what are you they, saying? What are you saying? That they were, that people would see them together and they would be more, I don't know. I, I, it seemed like more than just brotherly, sisterly love. Is that what you're saying? That they were, they, they had this thing that they, yes, it was like, uh, she, he would, she'd sit on his lap and there was this whole, yuck. Yeah. And so there's this whole dynamic that I'm like, she was manipulating him probably in a lot of ways. Uh, I think that, uh, Laura whore is what they call her. I've heard, <laughs> have you heard that one? No, uh, no, but okay. But it's so funny. Okay, do you remember when they were playing that um, um, that audio of Melanie Gibb and she's talking on the phone with with Lori and Chad and it's starting to get heated, right? And you know, uh, Lori's like, you know, basically, I, I feel like you're being you're being led by lust, is what she she said to her. And I remember, I can't remember the exact words, but what she said, I was like, she just called you a whore. That's what I yeah. said. <laughs> He called her Melanie in one of the Melanie Gibb in one of the calls um, tried to call her. Was it Cora whore? I think it's a, their their belief. It, the LDS that comes from the LDS. It's a I believe they believe that Cora whore is Satan. Cora. So Cora. so I don't know that one. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, if you go in the chats and whatever you see people talking like like some people call him Chud, which I don't understand that one. But the um, the they call her Lore whore. Yes, it's all up in the because. Melanie uh, likened her to Korahor from their from the Book of Mormon, I believe it is, um, wow. and it's their word for Satan, I do believe it's or something oh, okay. like that. I thought you were saying that she was a she was the lady, you know, of the evening. <laughs> no, no. I, well, that, too, that's, I think that that's what they were referring to because that is something that she, especially going along with this lines where you know she's manipulating her brother by her womanly wiles. I'm sorry to say it; it's disgusting. Yikes. I know, but. I'm sorry, but it was out there. It's been said and that uh, they had a, they would make it. I think it was part of the testimony or it was said in something that it may have been one of the documentaries that I, that I saw that she had, uh, that they just had a different way. They would, they would say things together and be that way, make jokes in that manner together with, without being too gross. But it, it is a, you know, like only reason I brought that up is because it's a way for her, another way for her to manipulate is by using, oh. For that, sure, you for know. Sure. So, but we're at ten minutes out, out, and there's nothing yet, and I'm still still looking at this. <laughs> so they should be back. Did they say? Did they say one ten, one fifteen? I forget what they said. But anyway, yeah, uh, yeah, Carissa, it's all out there. It's all stuff that people have said, or it's it was uh, mentioned that they how they were together and stuff, and uh, by friends and said that they. Here we oh, go. Okay. Well, thanks for having Good me, Addie. You. Thank you so much for being up with me. Thank you. Please be seated. Thank you. All right, we're back on the record on CR 22211623, State of Idaho versus Chad Guy Daybell. We concluded the lunch recess. We are on the record outside the presence of the jurors who have not returned to the court 